Bromante was banned by WADA back in the 1990s for good reason. It works. It's not a dirty stimulant, but a compound that changes your baseline for more energy, more resilience, more dopamine, as it upregulates tyrosine hydroxylase, the gatekeeper of dopamine synthesis, meaning your body produces dopamine more efficiently. Without crash and burn, in addition, it boosts mitochondrial enzymes, so it's a subtle yet sustainable performance enhancement with science to back it up both in animal and human studies. So I'm gonna share my personal results with it, but first of all, I'm gonna look at the data on bromantane. As we age, our dopamine pathways decline, in particular, dopamine receptor density, D1 and D2, and then you've got uh, tyrosine hydroxylase again, that expression that down regulates with age, meaning uh, conditions like anhedonia, also apathy, and reduced learning capacity. This, and I've seen this people in their 60s where they lose that zest for life, learning new things. And you might be saying just eat more of that precursor amino acid, L-tyrosine. And no, if you've got low levels of tyrosine hydroxylase, then it doesn't matter how much L-tyrosine you have, you won't convert it to L-dopa, which then converts into dopamine. As someone that's used ADHD medication in the past, that can give you dopamine spikes, as well as inhibiting its reuptake. So this can increase reactive oxygen species in the brain, as well as impairing sleep quality, so less REM and slow wave sleep, and then that means less glymphatic clearance of those neurotoxins. On top of sleep, your recovery scores drop too because you're stimulating your heart rate. So then that means a drain on your sympathetic nervous system. So heart rate variability, that will drop too. Bromantane, on the other hand, increases dopamine synthesis through gene expression, of course, of tyrosine hydroxylase. And then it also has adaptogenic properties too. And I've seen my heart rate variability. It's as best it's ever been while I've been on bromantane. Jumping over to bromantane's performance enhancing benefits, it upregulates genes involved in mitochondrial biogenesis, PGC1 alpha, as well as uh, superoxide dismutase 2, which is a potent RS scavenger for mitochondria. And this antioxidant enzyme superoxide dismutase, it steeply drops in your 30s. That's why you see athletic performance drop so significantly over that decade. And then you've got mitochondrial uncoupling proteins, so uh, limiting uh, the membrane potential and reducing reactive oxygen species. It's also got neuroprotective effects as it modulates anti-inflammatory genes, so it can downregulate IL-1 beta, inflammatory cytokines like that, and TNF-alpha. And in contrast to those ADHD medications like Adderall and Ritalin, they can actually drive up neuroinflammation. And I think that that's a major reason why my IL-6, interleukin-6, over the years was sky high when I first started testing in the midpoint of uh, 2023, I was in the 96th percentile. It's not just neuroinflammation, excessive free dopamine can also drive glial activation, your brain's immune cells, and then that can further drive cellular senescence, and that can take a long time to clear. And on that subject of the immune system, it's also got immune modulating properties as shown in Russian studies, improving uh, viral patients, their um, recovery from that, and just general uh, recovery from exercise with athletes. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. Diving into my cycle of bromantane, I did 30 capsules last year, just doing it one a day for 30 days. And that was just well during only on weekdays only. And this cycle I intended to do the same thing but uh, this time after three days, I thought I'm gonna go up to two capsules a day just to compare the difference. So in reality, uh, doing it over three weeks rather than six, and I've definitely noticed the difference. The first few days, no, because obviously it takes time for gene expression for that to take place with tyrosine hydroxylase, and especially me going up in the dose, then I started to notice it. And interestingly, after that first week, so a few days on the, the one capsule and then the last couple of that week on two, following on that next Monday, so I'd had the weekend off. And then so I did it in the morning with my as a pre-workout with everything else. I started to notice my cardio was going up. And then also I went straight to, from the gym to having my hair cut. So just after eight o'clock in the morning, and then I'm getting this, like I'm listening to the music while I'm getting my hair cut. And I feel like it's like a Friday afternoon, like the motivation was there. Like I just felt like 
Uh, I was like, what am I so excited for? I've got such a busy week ahead of me. This is only the beginning on a Monday morning, but I had that kind of, with the music going, getting my hair cut, I had that Friday feeling already. Although quite subtle, the effect from bromantane has got some similar properties to my past ADHD medication. For example, I'm more open-minded to different documentaries, noticing small details, and of course, slightly more ambitious, but also more impatient and less tolerant of inefficiency. And this is a double-edged sword. This is why when a man's a new father, their prolactin goes up and their dopamine and testosterone go down to make them more caring, less ruthless, more risk adverse. It's about finding that sweet spot with dopamine, which I feel I'm at now, and I'll be keeping an eye on metabolites of it moving forward. And back onto that cardio boosting effect, I measure my caloric output on a cross trainer going as hard as I can for 20 minutes while reading the subtitles. That gives me a steady state measurement of uh, how good my cardio is. Well, cardio in the long term, but in the short term, it's just measuring more recovery. And interestingly, because I recently completed a cycle of meldonium, which is an anti-hypoxic drug. It's got a lot of data behind it, and uh, you're just better at utilizing oxygen. And my actual caloric output was nearing that. Not every time it would go up and down, but one of the times it was almost there, like less than 1% off that. So it just shows that uh, the this bromantane, it does have obviously that um, PGC1 alpha activating mitochondrial biogenesis. There's an element of that. It obviously does improve physical performance, but uh, the adaptogenic properties, recovery, and uh, superoxide dismutase is obviously there, but not quite at the level because that, that meldonium, I was also cycling it with hypoxin, which does boost that SOD as well. So it's almost there. It's very interesting, but not consistently. Some days it was a few percent down or even up to, say, closer to 5%, 4 or 5% down. So it does fluctuate. So it shows that the recovery, when, when I compare it to meldonium and hypoxin, the, the the caloric output was always always higher so it just shows that um, that uh, the antioxidant properties of it are nowhere near as much as with um, doing meldonium and hypoxin maybe that's an overstatement being nowhere near because for most people four percent is pretty close and for the record my baseline is generally around 10 percent that's if i'm not doing any kind of drugs to boost physical performance another potential pathway for the increased caloric output is better multitasking because I've noticed that in the past I talked about ADHD medication and I, I remember I could read even with really loud music quite technical things at the same time so then uh, yeah it's using a treadmill with music you're listening to blasting it and then uh, reading those subtitles and being able to blast your exercise as hard as you can that uh, does show that it's a very different pathway to meldonium which yeah you can focus better with that as well because you've got better oxygen usage when taking a compound, I always welcome off-target benefits, like in this case, boosting my physical performance. I wasn't expecting that. And uh, yeah, for all my cardio, doing those three 20-minute sessions a week, that seems to be the Goldilocks zone for me, where I'm not overtraining because my heart rate variability, that doesn't drop. And so doing anything I can to enhance that. And remember, I am going as hard as I can within reason. My brain is a limiting factor. Over time, this endurance regimen is improving my VO2 max. And as you may well know, that uh, out of any single indicator of longevity, VO2 max as an individual thing is the most important because you can't have that any other thing being seriously out of whack. It's very, very difficult to have a good VO2 max at the same time. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna do bromantane again, but this time I'll use the whole bottle, so all 60 capsules, and I'll do that over six weeks, obviously on those weekdays only. It does have a reasonable half-life around 11 hours or so, but obviously it has made epigenetic changes as well so that's not just the half-life we're taking into account there is a longer effect to it there's all kinds of different rationale for when to do a bromantane cycle it depends obviously on the reasons why you're using it the reason why i was was just in the, these months leading up to the summer holidays time with my children just keeping extra dopamine synthesis going on for motivation for working hard and then i can have a break so i get my bromantane from swiss chems they're very fairly priced good range of different products and I even did my own independent testing on one of their peptides, Epitalon. So if you like that video, then check out this one on B-Methyl. Not only is it an anti-hypoxic, so it boosts physical performance, it also has nootropic benefits as well as adaptogenic. Thanks for watching. See you next time.